All right, here we go. Okay, so John, we're getting ready to build a new truss, and so what's important is we know we need to know exactly how far it is from one side all the way across to the other side. And on this side, we have the reference post. We know this is the post that we're going to be setting the other truss on top of, or the rafter. But over this side, there's a doorway, and this doorway does it. We put a big giant oak beam across it so that it will hold the load of the truss. And what John is going to do now is measure from the, the last truss right here over to the point where he's going to set the new truss. Okay. And you've already got your mark there. We've already done this before we run the camera, but we, we're just do, double checking so you guys can know. All right. Now he's going to hand me the end of the tape measure. And what I'm going to do is fall off the truck. I'm going to grab this tape measure and carry it to the other side. And this is your top plate here. I'm going to measure directly over the top plate from this side. And then he is going to make his measurement so we know exactly how far each bird mouth needs to be apart. We're going to go with 194 and 78. But, but we're on track. That's about what the other ones were. So our overall length was 194 and three quarters of an inch. The, now what you have to do now is half that. So that'll be 97 and three eighths of an inch. Because uh, you're going to split the difference. Now you have to keep in mind if at the peak of your if you at the if you're at the very peak of your rafters if you're going to have a uh, a beam running down the center you have to subtract the width of that beam and our rafters were to our rafters the tops of the rafters are touching one another all right so again we're going to go for this calculator if you don't know about this calculator if you've never done uh, rafters before this is an awesome tool just type in rafter calculator and I found the one at blocklayers.com to be the very best one and we'll, we'll look this up on the internet for you and I'll do some screenshots for you but you just work your way in we already got all the information in from the last one but all we're going to do here is change it from eight inch or eight foot one inch and then this right here we're going to change this to uh, three eighths all right so that's it and our, our roof pitch is six to one double check that make sure it's six to one we want to have one foot overhang and our rafter depth is six inches that's how thick the board is and our rafter thickness is six inches and i bumped that and made that half so we'll go ahead and take that off there so six and six because we cut these at true six by sixes on the on the um yeah on the we cut this at true six by sixes on the uh, sawmill and over here on this side you're gonna how, how deep your bird's mouth is. I'm gonna use a three and a half. Again, the wall thickness of my greenhouse is gonna be six inches. Height is eight foot, but it doesn't really matter. So then you're gonna come back over here, push calculate, and all of a sudden, everything you need to know is on this little picture. And it is a picture, so it really helps you to draw this out. But we'll go ahead and draw it out on the post and go from there. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make a mark. It's just a reference point. But you don't even really have to do this part. But just, I like to do a reference mark. So this is your, this is the part we're going to cut off, cut from, and this is going to be the top of the rafter. So we're going to use this. You see this little, which says pivot right here. You're going to make sure that this little mark is right, the corner that's right there. And then on your, on your square here, this is called a speed square. It has uh, marks here from one to thirty. So we're going to do a 6-1 pitch, right? So right there's the 6. So you're just going to leave this end on the mark and rotate it around. There's 5, and there's 6. So that's about as close to perfect 6 as we're going to get. So there's your pitch. That's where the cut the uh, angle on the top of your rafter. This is the part that gets cut off. All right, so we've got our, our angle cut here. And then went ahead and, and took my feet square and run a, a line straight down here. So all you do then, if you I don't have a I don't have a big saw. They make a special saw for something like this. 
all we have is a chainsaw, a small chainsaw. So what I have learned, if you run this line here, and then run the line straight down, and then you get on this side, and you line your saw chainsaw up, and you just cut on this side of the line, you can control really well how, how square the cut is. All right, you can see there, that's not perfect, but you know what, that's pretty daggum all right. Yeah, that's not perfect at all, but uh, it's it's going to be really good for this. No such thing as perfect in wood. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our app that we uh, just made up, and we're going to cut our... Sorry, right, All right, the next thing we're going to do is cut our, our bird's mouth. You're going to measure from the top of the of the truss. So he's going to hook me on that end. And that's the top of the angle. And I'm going to go down here and my app says 9 foot and 7 eighths inches. So we're going to come down to 9 foot, 7 eighths of an inch. Okay. So here's our mark. You know, if you look on that side down at the end, it's you can tell the angles this way. So that helps you keep going. So the bird's mouth is going to be on this side. This will be the side that the bird's mouth is cut out right here. But what we're going to do is go ahead and put this pivot point again right here on that mark, and we're going to rotate around to a six. We're doing a six to one pitch. If you want to do a four to one pitch, it would be here. 5 to 1, and then 6 to 1, and so on and so forth. So now my angles will be the same on both sides. Now here's the here's the trick. You don't want to um, uh, get confused. This thing, The bird's mouth is going to be cut like this. So this this is the bottom. The bird's mouth is always going to be cut on the on the top. I mean, from the, the mark's always going to be from the top. The bird's mouth is going to be cut from the bottom. Does that make sense? Probably not. All right, so... What we're going to do now is turn the square around, and we know that we've already looked at the measurements on our app, and it's one and three quarters inch up, right? Or another way to do it is it's three and a half inches to the edge using a regular square. I kind of go a little bit old school on this because I feel comfortable with this with the actual square. So we'll go right here like this. Make this line is perfectly the same and put it right there on that three on that little one and three quarters mark right here and it will be exactly three and a half inches to the edge of the cut now this is not rocket science it's not going to be exact again wood is wood we're going to do now is do the same thing we did before. Just going to take the speed square and sit right here on our mark. And I'll take the chainsaw and run right down. I would normally cut it probably from this side, but this got a little wane on this board over here, so I know this will be a little bit more accurate. There's no need to describe the word wang. 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 Yeah, probably so. Here. So if you're not familiar, when you have a, a board with a, a good clean edge like this, and it comes down in, there's a little bit of bark left over. We uh, call that wane, and I don't know why it's called wane, but that's what it's called. I'm sure, there's probably some dude named Wayne come up with that. Could be.
again you take and line those two marks up that's a pretty good cut for a chainsaw I'm happy with that now let's cut a bird's mouth out so what I'm gonna do now I've got my bird's mouth drawed out on this side I don't have again their exact tools that we need they make they make a saw for cutting beams we don't have that my wife won't let me get it because it costs seven hundred dollars and so we just have to do it with chainsaw and saws all and does that sound like a lot of whining? I think there's some whining going on in there. I like tools. You got, too many. you got way too many. All right, so we, what I did is I've taken those two lines right here and I transcribed them down. And I'll bring it back. We're going to rotate one more time. This is the mark. Uh, what is this one? Then we're going to just rotate this around to six. All I'm doing is reversing it on the other side now. You can come right, you can come right here and go ahead and come up one and three quarters of an inch. And again, all you really need to do is get it to where it's three and a half, but I'm gonna make three and a half. It, if, you, if you do it right, this is this is one and three quarters inch this way, or three and a half this way. So right there is three and a half. And again, there is no perfect in wood. Now you can look on the on that app that will tell you what this angle is, which is 26, uh, 26 and a half ish uh, degrees. So what I've done here is taken the saw and I've set it on 26 and a half. And then you can take the saw again, set it down and bring the bottom of the blade to this mark. Okay, go ahead and lock me in. So when I cut through now, it's going to be just as deep as it needs to be. All right, yep, there. I got it pinched just a little bit. There you go. Now I don't have a saw that will cut this angle. It's too steep for any saw that I have, so we're, we have to use the saws off. And probably most people are gonna do this, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use some kind of setup like we do. So what I do, again, is I take the saw, I set it at an angle, and follow this side all the way down to this, this cut. And uh, you'll see, just watch what I do. So I've got a pretty good start here. I followed that line pretty well, and I've got this line followed pretty, uh, maybe a hair up here. We can always come back and shave that off just a little bit. It's not that big a deal. Let me try with it. All right, and now I'll go to the other side. Our bird mouth. Most people are probably not going to be cutting this with a 
uh, we're cutting a six by six. As most people build trusses for the greenhouses out of like a two by six. And that's gonna be a lot easier to work with because there's it's only a, an inch and three quarters inches wide or inch and three quarters of an inch wide. So there's less room for variation. When you're cutting a full six inches across, there's a lot of room for deviation from one side to the other. In fact, I see a little, I felt a little piece right here. We're just gonna snip that out. Again, this is wood, so it's not rocket science accurate. So why are you using a trailer? Okay, the reason we're using the trailer is because it's a really good flat surface and it gives us enough uh, flat surface that's pretty square to, to set these up for success. If you're trying to do this off something flat, you can do it, but it's going to be a lot harder. So what we do is lay it all out, put the second piece on, we'll screw them together at the top, we'll measure the bird mouth distance. Not for sure. This is the bird's mouth. We'll measure from the back of this, this bird's mouth back to the back of the other one, which is not here yet. And make sure that our measurements from one side of the plate to the other side of the plate match. And we'll do all that before we, we set it up there. And we put the the, the uh, support across the top. What you call it? Collar tie. Collar tie. We put the collar tie across the top, and then once we do that, it's technically kind of crossing over to becoming a truss at that point. Hmm. So you working hard but smart. Well, I don't know if I'm going to say smart. John's here, so we're working smarter. No, no, yeah, he's, no brains here. He's the brains behind me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill. We got some big old lag. They call it GRK screws. It's going to go through this and set into the beams on the greenhouse plate. And what we're going to do is to keep this from splitting, which you probably wouldn't split. But we'll go ahead and pre-drill this and give the head of the screw a flat spot. Let me turn this around a little bit better so you can see. So this is where the the plate's going to set. We're just going to start right here. And we want this to kind of go right here. There's the six-inch beam going to be sitting. Right here and we want to kind of be the center of that so we're going to take this and kind of screw in straight first and then kind of turn so that's our preview pre-drilled hole next thing we're going to do is use this really long drill bit and again we're going to aim where that post is going to be Screw this in, it won't split. All right, if you were going to use a two by six instead of, instead of the six by six, you're going to do a two by six. You could pre drill all the way through the same way and use a big bolt like this, uh, or you could just maybe pre drill at an angle with a smaller drill bit and use like 16 penny, 16 penny nails to, um, to uh, uh, nail your truss into place. They're also, depending on where you're at, you may have building codes which will require you to have some sort of anchor, hurricane anchors as they call them, or wind anchors. So just be aware of, of your surroundings and your building codes. So we're going to do two countersunk uh, lag bolts or GRK screws again. And the same principle, we're going to aim down this beam. These are where the two meet together. So we'll have one at, on this side will be at the top, and we'll make another hole on this side at the bottom. So let me show you what we're doing. That way the, the bolts are not interfering with each other. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and pre-drill this. I'm not pre-drilling this part, just this part here. I want this to spin and be able to pull these two together. Just go ahead 
and I think this has got a little bow in it. It's the trailer, I think. Hang on, it's better. You know, shim it a little bit. That's perfect. All right, so what we got now is we're going to put these two together. Once so we get this started, and we're just going to push right through to this other one and pull them together. Stay going up as good as they're gonna get. What we're doing now is we're measuring from the center here down three foot. And that's gonna be where we the top of our board. We'll put a what do you call that again? Collar tie. All right. So now we're gonna do is measure down from the center three foot on both sides, and then we're gonna that'll be the top of the collar tie that runs between the two. But before we do that, we'll measure. From the bird's mouth to bird's mouth, to make sure you get it right. What's that? Uh, 194 and three quarters. Right, so what we're gonna do now is you look down here. John's gonna touch the very back of the bird's mouth, and I'm going to put my ruler here. And we're gonna move this around so this gets to 193, or excuse me, 194 and three quarters. And right there is where we're at. So, now we'll put the collar tie on and screw this thing down and it will keep the correct uh, pitch and then we can lift it with a tractor and not have to worry about all that stuff. Just makes the whole, basically turns, once you put the collar on it kind of becomes a truss. here so here's our our top we're gonna pull the collar around you want me to take some this way or no I got it I got it to the very right there right on your hand so we're both going to keep moving our boards back until we get to the very peak of it again this is not necessarily rocket science Pretty good about it? I do now. All right. So now we're gonna, we, get, we know our, our bird's mouth are the right distance apart. sure that we're going to double check the bird's mouth one more time because of everything vibrating around. Good thing we did there. All right, here we go. All right, 194 and three quarters inches. So I'll go over here and put a screw in. That'll lock it into place. My mark's good here. Now we don't have to worry about this thing moving around anymore. I got enough. Alright. Put five in both of them. Alright, and there is our truss up. It looks pretty good. 
Hey, listen, I appreciate you watching our channel. If you like uh, content like this, leave us a comment in the comment section below telling us that you like it, and we'll try to do some more. God bless. Have a great day.